Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and tonight I'm going to show you how you can paint two little elephants making a heart with their trunks in front of a fiery sunset. I'm going to explain this step by step, and the idea of this is so that you can paint this for yourself at home. This is a full free video art class that we're going to do right now on Facebook. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He helps me do these really fun classes by tracking us with one of our robotic cameras and really zooming in on the action. So you're going to see me mix the paint colors. You're going to really understand all the techniques that I'm doing, and you're going to be able to really duplicate them for yourself. Now, I love going out on Facebook. So one of the things I would love it if you could do, if you're familiar with all the groups and you can go ahead and share the link and let everybody know where we are, that would be super helpful. Like the page or follow the page. That way they give you the pop-up notification when we're live, or you can always sign up for our gnomes. Are you guys ready to just jump in and do this painting this evening? I think I am. Are you guys? I think so. I think we're all ready. Let's get into it. All right. Oh, palette. I love it. So we have some fun colors for tonight's project. We have cadmium yellow. We have cad, uh, you could call this uh, cadmium orange or in some lines, cad red light. Either is fine. You just want an orange color. I have some Mars black, dioxazine purple, phthalo blue, quinacridone magenta, cad red medium, and titanium white. I have a little surface here. This is one of the Artist Lofts packs. It is a 9 by 12. You can get these really economically, but you know, just really anything that's about 9 by 12 online that you find will work just fine. This isn't one of those things that you have to have exactly the exact things that I have. If you kind of like approximately have the things that I have, you're going to get a good result. So it's going to be one of those kind of fun, relaxed lessons. I'm going to start this out using a big brush. This is a number 30 bright uh, ruby satin. You just want a nice big brush so I'll paint the canvas easily. On here, I like to put wishes. Mm -hmm. And I thought for this one, it would be really nice to put a wish intention out there that protection for the habitats of wild things. That we see a real resurgence of just protecting wild things and an end to poaching and an end to that type of thing. And then um, personally in our own community, love, support, and community surrounding our own patty who's going through a really sad loss right now. And we just want her not to be doing that alone. And I just personally want to say that, you know, I love you and I wish I could be there and give you a big hug, but know that we're all there in spirit. I'm ready to paint. All right. Let's I'm going to get my brush wet initially, not for any special secret artist reason, other than to blend out my watercolor pencil. <laughs> mm. So at this stage, this isn't really a technique just so much as, knowing that in a minute I'm going to be painting over in colors and I don't want the words to show through. I want them to become part of my painting. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I'm going to get my big brush nice and damp and I will come kind of brush back and forth just a little bit. Let's get some white, shall we? Yeah. A little white on our surface and I'm going to brush back and forth right up there with just a little bit of white and that's going to kind of prep it for when I put in the yellow to make sure that we're starting with a light enough color and that way we can get a really exciting sunset. Hmm. So it's real easy to come up there and darken and darken, but sometimes it can be hard to get the light values that we're going to want. And also that'll make a nice transition for where I'm going to want to move up into my purples. So I'm just brushing this brush on the wide back and forth. It's just a flat regular brush stroke. Yeah. There isn't anything special about it. It's just very effective. Now, there are some folks that just got their gnome, their notifications. Hi, so y'all. <laughs> if you're just joining us and you'd like to get your notification, you can text the Art Sherpa to 33222 and you'll get you that note. You'll get your notification when we go live here as well. So I'm taking my quinacridone. Thank you for doing that, babe. Sure. I'm taking my quinacridone magenta and I'm pulling it out into my brush and I'm flipping it. I did get a little white and I'm going to come here at this space on the yellow and I'm going to go ahead and make a transition. It's going to work really well. The pink will transition quite nicely to the purple up here and it will also translate quite nicely to the orange down here. So when you're doing a real yellow, orange and purple sky, Sometimes having a little color bridge that you work on top of can really give you a hand, not having difficulties with some of those colors. Mm. I am going to take uh, some of my blue here. I mean, that's my purple. 
I know colors. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and I, now I'm going to get my blue, and I'm going to mix my purple and my blue together. And then I'm going to put a lot of white into it. I'm going to come right here, and this is going to be that periwinkle kind of undercolor in the sky. So you can already see how that pink oh, yeah. kept everything from graying out. I'm going to keep loading in some paint. This is my white, and you can see I flip my brush. That just gets a lot of paint in there, and that can help you. My color is going to get very light up here because I really want my dark clouds to pop. I like painting sunsets. It is fun. Just in general, as a thing, because they're always colorful. Mm -hmm. And then this scene is so sweet with these two elephants who could not get behind this and excited about painting that. So back and forth, and pull that down. And that is the underpainting. I would say that that is like stage one yeah. of this painting. That turned now, out really nice. Isn't that cool? I like that. So for you guys at home, some of the things that you're going to be dealing with is rinsing out your brush thoroughly between your color transitions because you don't want hidden pigment to sneak in the brush and then get somewhere you don't want it. You're going to want to be able to have both areas of paint be wet. So this paint needs to be wet and the next color paint needs to be wet if you want them to blend together. Um, and then also remember to give yourself a nice bridge. Even if you're not using my exact colors, these principles will work really well here. This is a good time to step back and assess your transition and make sure that you don't have just a stripe of purple and a stripe of pink and a stripe of yellow, that there is some blending or ombre. Mm. If you do, all you've got to do is let it dry and just try again, paint the whole process again till you're happy with the transition. All right, I'm going to step back and look too, and let's take it all in. Now, if you're uh, just joining us and you're looking for the list to paint or any of these materials, you can check right there in the list in the description below. And we've got all that stuff conveniently listed there for you to find. And in a previous post, we put in what's called a traceable. And what's nice about the traceable is if you're not into drawing, and that is just an art skill, and it's not cheating to use the traceable, you can use that traceable to make your experience a little bit easier with the painting. And I know you're going to pick up drawing as you go, but don't let that be like an obstacle or barrier to stop you from being creative today you're worried about that one technique in the many many techniques that we're going to be doing tonight now to get my next layer i think i'm going to definitely want to dry this a little bit okay because i want my next layers to be kind of coming over that on the top so while, while she's drying that next layer i'll say don't forget to use the lowest heat setting when you're doing this because those heat setting when you use high heat the heat can actually um, cause color shift and problems, especially in student paint. So if you're, you know, make sure you're using uh, low heat, no heat. Low heat. Don't turn up the heat yet. <laughs> Don't turn up, no heat. No heat, low heat, some version of that. Now for the next part, um, I'm gonna use one of my very favorite brushes for doing this type of cloud work and sunset. All I want you to look for is like, don't like throw down and be like, oh, I don't have that brush. Just use the brushes that you have. But I'm going to talk about why this brush is helpful and what you want to look for in a brush if you're trying to find a brush that does this. So this here is a number 12 Silverstone Round. I've always had one of these brushes, and they are hog bristles. And if you'll notice, they are what's called flag, which means the ends are a little bit split, and they're kind of tapped into the form where the, their shorter hair is here, and they're kind of coming to a point. And there's a nice big squish belly, right? Also, when I'm painting with it, the hairs are not coming out. Your only defense against that is if you get a new hog brush, wash it vigorously five or six times to get as many of the loose bristles out as you can before you begin painting. And if you do ever get one in your painting, just carefully flick it out with your nail and it'll be okay. It's not like... And even if you left it in, it's just DNA or information for somebody way far in the future who finds your painting. Mm. I'm going to dip this in water just a little bit, and I'm going to squeeze out the extra moisture. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because hog can get very, very soft and mushy when mm. it's wet. And we want it to not quite be that soft and mushy. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this nice orange here and a little bit of the red and make kind of a half step. And let's come here and begin painting 
this very bright area. It is quite bright, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you'll notice I'm just going very softly on the tip back and forth, kind of layering this in. And it's great that the yellow is underneath because it's just going to glow a little bit yellow under my orange. Ah. So I won't be having any problems there, which is what I'm hoping for. I'm going to dip just the toe. When I say the toe of the brush, I mean just that little point there in water. And I'll come back and I'll brush back and forth as you do. As you do. Like you do. Just, but I won't want to be in John's way. Oh, you're not. <laughs> He's so good with these cameras. Well, you getting around me. We have a couple. We got a couple. I'm going to get right into the yellow. I'm dipping the toe of my brush in the water. I'm getting right into the yellow. And right here, I'm going to begin brushing back and forth. A little more of that into the water. Look at that. So we're going to start creating that brighter orange. That's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Just those wonderful little bits. On the outer edges here, I might get a little bit of my magenta and my cad red together, and I'm going to come mix that brighter color. I'm going to stay to the outer edge, and I'm going to just dust in a little bit here and there. Uh -huh. Notice that it's blending now. It's soft, isn't it? That's a lot about, if I was pressing hard, I wouldn't quite get the same result. It's about being on the toe of the brush. So that's just something, it's like a little trick that you get used to. And I'm going to just go back and forth here as well. Another thing I do is I don't make all my brush strokes the same length. Some of them are shorter and some of them are longer. Mm. And there's kind of an irregular keyhole shape that's coming up. So that's the thing that I really like. Now I'm going to get a lot more into my pink and I may even get a little white into it. And I'm going to make sure that I use that pink again as a bridge between those two areas, huh? And I can kind of scuffle this brush, which I really like. Just a little scumbling. Yeah. There we go. A little bit of white in there. Just pick up a little bit of that pink. Have some fun with it. Brush back and forth. Now I'm going to rinse out quite well. And then I'll take the extra water. Definitely, definitely out of my brush because mm. I don't want too much of it in there. Because again, it could carry way too much. I'm going to get some of my doxazine. See, this is just a big chunky brush and some of my magenta. And it's okay to pick up a little bit of the white there. And we're going to come back here and begin to talk about this little dark space in the clouds. See how I'm just kind of wiggling back and forth? Ew. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. I'm not going to go up too far yet because I have lots of little cloud shapes to make, but I want to begin to be in the space between these two. My big brush grabbed me some blue. Yeah? Yes, it did. It happens. So I'm going to just avoid that because I wasn't ready for that mix yet. Hmm. I'll use it later, so I'm not too worried. Just pulling this here. And sometimes it's nice to make little less even spaces. And they kind of wet into wet blends. They make a halfway transition. We can always come back and add more purple. It can be very nice to have those halfway transitions. Yeah. I'm going to get a little more purple on my brush and some white right there on the toe. You could use a Right? You could use really any shape brush that you want. Don't feel like you've got to just use this one. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to definitely make little kind of circular motions to create an uneven little sky. And where you have little bits of kind of broken cloud, like I'm going to come right on the toe of that brush and push that out. So you can see how that little point does actually do me a favor here. Mm. You could use the corner of your bright though to get that. So don't feel like Oh, that's ungettable. It's not. It just takes practice. Weird little uneven shapes.
weird little uneven shapes. Let's keep coming through here. There we go. Weird little uneven shapes. We're going to that's important. bring these up here. You talk about that not cloning. Is that right? Not cloning. That's right. Not repeating the same basic shape. You want to randomize your shapes. Because clouds, they randomize their shapes. They are not the same cloud. Yes. These clouds are not like the others. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important to get into, you know, when you're trying to do that. Just bring that purple there. Just on the toe. You know, and you can use the reference that we provided from earlier up in the feed. Or you can just paint along with us using the picture in picture. Either of those options is totally fine. Sometimes it's good to like step back and give it a look and see how you think it's coming together. Definitely step back and give a look and see how you think it's coming together. Hmm. I'm going to ask. So we have a couple of students who are in class today. They're in class today. Are they making sure that they're having fun and being really kind to themselves and respectful of their artwork? Because when you know, you talk about your artwork, you're talking about yourself. <laughs> no pressure. So I was just curious what class they were um, ducking out of. So I'm Oh, asking. like you're at school. They're, it's, they're like in school right now. And so, you know, I'm Would just have been like, you in school. I totally get your decision here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it's math. I have half bet. It's math? That, that it may be math. You know, because yeah. art trumps math. Art always trumps math. I say that. A bunch of mathematicians just were like... <gasps> You did not. I don't know. I think even they like art and, 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 and things. Even if I mean, you love math, art can help math because it helps you be creative and imaginative. It's true. It does. You have to imagine things you can't see. You want know, to talk about all kinds of subatomic quantum things. Mm. It takes some imagination. Even if there's a lot of observation. <laughs> it's true. I'm trying to allow a lot of that little kind of blue sky to peek through. And I want to make sure that I'm creating puffs that I believe in. Puffs you can believe in. Believe in your puffs. Believe in your puffs. And it's fun to puff. Mm -hmm. Making little, little clouds, dotting the sky. Yeah, they're just coming here and they're like, oh, we're all sort of traveling together, but then we're doing weird things. And, and we like that, that weirdness that we're up to. Now, if you're just joining us and you missed the first part of this, don't worry. It'll be up after the show. You'll be able to just save the post. Get yep. that save post and then add it to a collection. Just call it Art Sherpa. And then anytime you see us here live on Facebook, you'll have them all there for you to watch whenever you want to find them. And be sure if you if you want notifications, you gotta like or follow the page. I don't remember what it was. One of those makes Facebook tell you things. Yeah, I'm not really great at knowing which of those things is what makes Facebook tell you things, but one of those two things makes Facebook tell you when stuff is happening. I'm adding a darker value now to my purple. I'm gonna come in here and kind of add some deeper totes, as you might want to do a few places. Because it's fun to just paint a sunset. You can see I'm just on that tower and I'm just wiggling it around. I kind of imagine, and I don't know if Jen can get really on this. Like, you right, can see yeah, how go. little of it I'm just lean, putting lean in the Lean to your canvas. right. Hmm? Lean to your right. There you go. I think sometimes if you can see what's happening with the brush, it can help you find your way into the technique. And beginners can do pretty much most techniques. It's not that you guys can't do them. It's about understanding what they are mm -hmm. and getting your mind's eye to work with your hand. Sometimes they forget to pair up. They do. They're a pain like that. I'm going to do some cool stuff right here. So I'm going to take a little bit of my purple and go into my magenta as you'll want to, and then into my CAD. What? Yeah, that's a crazy color. I'm going to get this nice little burgundy space going here. 
Look at those wild colors. Yeah. Half, half tones. I like painting sunsets. Come by and we might paint another sunset next week. You never know. Probably no there'll be a few. There might be some more. I'm just feeling them right now. I just want to paint the sky in all the colors. So you can see I'm sort of moving those brighter little ranges up and enjoying that. I can come in and take a little bit of my magenta into my orange over here. Gives me a neat little color as well. And take advantage of wiggling that around mm. as you might want to. I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to add some bright kind of pink. Grab that magenta, grab that cad red, mix them together. I may even pop a little yellow into it. White. Just so fun to find the color. See, it's right there. Let's put some highlights under our cloud. So what's happening here? When you're painting sunsets, besides the wonderful transition of colors, and we are painting the transition of orange into a purple, one of my very favorite, yet somewhat challenging transitions to do. So when the sun is low like this, the clouds are dark at the top, and they're lit underneath. When you're trying to paint one of these sunsets, you just got to remember that you're not lighting the top of the clouds, you're lighting the bottom. You, you said that you triggered my inner Thor. <laughs> Sun's getting low, big guy. <laughs> we were watching uh, Avengers because John always sleeps through the movie, so he's got to catch up. Been a minute. I, I didn't realize that my spirit animal was a raccoon with guns, but... He means rocket. Yeah, after, <laughs> after seeing rocket... In a few in a few movies, I'm pretty sure that my spirit animal is a um, sarcastic raccoon from space. Are you? You're feeling that? Yeah. It's speaking to you. It's a, uh, you know, it's up there. Anyway, I'm enjoying this. So I'm putting these little highlights right here, talking about the underneath of these spaces. It's not that distracting, and I enjoy it. And these lighter colors. Now, we've got a lot of elephant here, so sometimes it's tempting. Yes, it can be very tempting to do work where you're about to paint over everything. I know I do it all the time. I'm adding a little more yellow to this because I just want to capture, get my pink up going again. You know, exaggerate some of these little moments. Mm. You can. You can have more than nature gives you when you're getting it. Feel like you can get more than nature wants to give you. Yeah. I like how your cloud's getting little highlights underneath them. It's turning out pretty cool. Wiggling that little toe there, aren't I? Yeah. Let's wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Getting those little highlights. <laughs> Are you guys enjoying playing with the little tip of the brush here? You know, playing with the little tip. And I'm going to just add that little bit of yellow there. That's looking pretty good. Stand back and take that in. And when you get back, you should start to see the sky taking, taking shape. Now, the thing I want you to do is be very kind to yourself because sometimes you'll be very critical of your own work. There's my Sherpa over there. What are you doing? Take, you're getting back to get a little, hmm. see how it looks. Yeah. It, well, it helps me. And then also I can do those step-by-steps to make it easier for people mm -hmm. who are coming in later and trying to know what step they're on, you know? Because nope. sometimes just knowing your style isn't that fun. I it really does look good. That. This is really good. Back Now, from here, you could almost put any silhouette you wanted on there. Any silhouette that you wanted on here would probably work. I'm going to come here with some yellow and just a smidge of my uh, orange and begin to work in this wonderful little space here. Now that's not one of your cloud brushes. No, this isn't one of my cloud brushes. I always tell people like I love my cloud brushes and my clouds do such a nice, wonderful job of doing like scumbled clouds. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a lot of tools in the world. 
Many ways to get a cloud. Many ways to cloud. You could use your toes. You, you could... actually you can. There's an artist and soul sister Johnson here in Houston, and she paints with her feet. You could use Q-tips. Used to. I don't know if that's still going on in her collection right now. I'm going to just take the toe and I'm making these little bits of story and then come up here and pushing that around and we're pushing it. Yeah. Now I'm using real cadmium pigment, so I'm not going to get my hands or fingers into it. Not because I have any problem, but only because sometimes you can be allergic to cadmium. And I like to be very careful about what I'm demonstrating. Yes. But if you were just doing a hue or a hand say, you could work your fingers into that. That's not going to be a problem. Right. So it's whatever you got going on. I'm just saying. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and white. Maybe a little more yellow than that. It's fun to do. We're going to paint out a little bit of the bright spaces right there, isn't it? Mm. The fun stuff. Playing in the fun stuff. Dancing your little brush along. I don't think I've changed brushes yet, have I? Um, I don't think so. Oh, we've just done those two. Get a little more yellow here. We have a lot of people catching us for the first time live. Really? Yeah. That is wonderful. You know I'm always so glad when you guys get to see this live because... The part where you guys get to talk with each other, that is special. I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I, guys, I love catching these lives with you guys. It's some of the most fun I have being able to see you guys and hear, hear what you're, you know, thinking about this stuff. All right, I'm liking that quite a lot. I'm going to get back and see if there's one more layer of the red I want to get in there, and then I'm going to put in a sun. How are you guys doing? Take a look at the painting and see where you're at. Mm. Right? Where are you going? What you doing? Yeah. That, the, the sort of sunness in there. We're starting, yeah, we're starting to, right? But I, I still want to get a little orange around. So I'm going to take this little orange because I have it here. And it's so interesting and I can really play with it. As you might want to. See how we're doing? Oh, yeah. Just playing with this and getting it to pop and creating these atmospheric layers. I'm wiggling the brush. Can you see I'm just sort of wiggling this? I do. This reminds me a bit of um, somewhere between doodling in its nature and calligraphy. <laughs> Get a little bit of our red here. You have these powerful pigments so you can layer them in when they're pure and create some very interesting drama. We definitely want drama in our artwork, don't we? Yeah. Now let's put that sun in. And I think it's sort of a fun sun. We're gonna use a number four round, this right here. This is a number four arch of a round. But what you're looking for in your brush is a nice fine point in a synthetic filament in something that's resilient and gives you a lot of control that will hold paint in the belly. So anything that does that will work here well. I have links to what I'm using, but you use what you have. I'm going to take some water and I thin my paint. You can kind of see how I swirl it around in there. And let's come right here and sort of put our sun in. Circles. Always a challenge. <laughs> mm. I'm going to get a little white into it. The sun will have a very white hot spot. And I like that this has that going on. You can really see it. Yeah. I'm kind of like swirling the paint around. Just to get that sense of things, I'm gonna get a lot more white into my brush. I'm 
And you can come here, and there's like these little spots that you can dance along here and sort of pick that up, implying those little, those little bits of things. You can always come back with your yellow, even blend a little bit of the cloud out into it. Rinse out. I think our sun could even be a little more white. So even a little bit brighter. Play with those little bits of cloud there. Enjoying our world. Having a bit of fun. Mm. Now, we have to let this dry so that we can chalk in our elephants. And again, let's look at that. That's the last of the sky. And at this stage, absolutely, you could put any silhouette on it you wanted. So if you loved everything about this, but you weren't into the elephants, and I can't imagine that, but it could happen, this would be a great time to do that. I'm going to dry this. Yeah. And then we'll take a couple questions, and then we'll put in the elephants. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'll say, don't forget to check all of the... Whoosh, whoosh, look at that. Got a button. Whoosh, there it is. Check in the link in the description down below, because you can find uh, a link to our traceables, to our website, to all those kinds of cool things that you might need to find. It's all down there in the link in the description down below. Um, what else should we say? I'm sure there's some stuff that's important. Thank you for coming and hanging out. Um, it's really good to see you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them up here, and we'll do our best to get those answered. Oh, will this at some next point area. want to put a hotter pink here, babe. We'll put, some, we'll put some more pink in there. I think I do. I want to Go put some it. like brighter little... So I'm going to take a little of my yellow over to my magenta. Just a bit into the magenta. And I'm going to get my white. And it's going to make this very kind of peachy hot pink. And I'm going to just make sure that we've got a little bit of this kind of working and very brightly being described in the cloud here. I'm just using my little brush to come along and pop a few bits. Because it's like really, I want to have bright color. Yeah, those highlights really make it pop up. It can, and if, you, if you've got the time and ability to do it, I say go for it. Never be afraid to go in and be like, you know, I got this one last thing I want to I wanna do. So are you ready for some of those questions? I'm ready for questions while we're putting in these little pops of highlight. So Jackie was asking, can you use oil paint brushes with acrylic? If they've never been in oils, yes. If they have been in oils, no. Mm. So if they're brand new brushes and it's labeled for oils, I'll tell you a secret. Um, they just label these brushes just any old thing. It's not necessarily uh, what that brush would actually be ideal for. So very often a brush will have multi-uses, like it will be good for watercolor or acrylic or oil. But that's so conditional, it's such a rare bit of tool. So generally what it is, is stiffer brushes if you're doing heavy bodied acrylic paint, softer brushes if you're doing that kind of craft or soft body paint, and you want tack on for the acrylic because it'll be more resilient. With the exception on the occasion you might have a hog or two just for that scuffly little brush stroke. I, I hope that helps. I think that answers it. I want, I'd love to answer it when I get a chance to. So I'm I'm kind of liking this. I'm, I'm enjoying the Facebook crowd. We get to have little emojis. There's lots of love going on. emojis? Yeah, because they'll, they get to, they get to oh, send. Oh, that's right. They can send emoji love. They can send emojis. I can seize the emojis. I like that. This is really fun. I like catching the undersides of these things. That's ha that makes me happy. I'll dry it again real quick. The reason I'm drying it twice is I want to chalk on here, and wet paint and chalk are not actually, in fact, friends. Ooh, that looks so nice. <laughs> it does. It's looking really nice. So, yeah, just make sure you use low heat. You heard me saying that earlier. Uh, that just helps make sure that you don't um, negatively affect the paint. Uh, student paints especially can be subject to heat and things like that. So you got to be careful. Wee! 
So I'm going to freehand this in using uh, Chuck for Chuck. I can take more questions too while I'm doing this. Hmm. Um, remember though, there's a traceable. So you don't have to do it this way. You could use gridding. That's a great way to get an image on. You can use a traceable and use the transfer method. And there's a bunch of videos on almost every YouTube uh, page that we have on our website that has the how to use the transfer. So if you don't even know how to do that, we've got that information for you. Any way that you get this onto the canvas is a valid real way. That's great. There was just, just a question about that. So. Oh, really? Yep. Well, because I think a lot of people are told tracing is cheating. <laughs> yeah. They're told that a lot. It's very strange. Do you, there was also a question. Do you, uh, these aren't really your style per se. No. Now, do, you, do you teach any lessons in your style? Uh, very rarely. I've done it a couple of times. Mine is a little bit more time intensive. Yeah. Um, and doesn't really lend itself to shorter beginner lessons. And the, the thing is, is that I want to teach everybody how to paint like themselves. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so worried, you know, that they paint like me. I want them to paint like them. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. So, because, you know, artist prerogative, right? And what's great about these little little trunk spaces is that you can just erase with your finger. Kind of making these nice little S curves. When they come together, they should sort of imply a heart. And I really enjoyed that about this. Yeah. Now the head's going to come up. And we've got a back here. So we have elephants in silhouette, so that's not that much pressure for us. Mm-hmm. And bring the little mouth in. And, and if you don't realize that these are real animals in a real silhouette, it would almost seem like their mouths weren't realistic. Yeah. If you didn't know that's actually how they are, which I think is kind of wonderful. They have a very swan-like kind of... That's a, just such a strange mouth. Even as you chalk it in, you just go, I disbelieve this. Yep. Now I'm going to definitely, I'm going to exaggerate these ears. Because that's going to make me happy, right? knowing where those are. Yeah. Makes me happy. We've got little trunks here, but I've got to get his little friend in, or her friend. I don't know. We're in silhouette, so there's not a lot of information. I think it's got to be uh, tus tusks or males, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that either. But you know what? This is the internet, and I bet somebody here does, and they will share it with us. So thank Tus you now, wise yeah. person who watches all the nature shows, who's going to tell us which... Uh, gender they are based on tusk or that it's not tellable in silhouette. We don't know that. Mm. But you could tell us. You could. I'm going to do this here. I'll go ahead and capture that little fun crazy mount. And bring this here. So I might take these off a little bit on there because they'll go really well. And once that's in, I can start painting that in in black paint. So if you're chalking it in, a couple things I want to show you, if you guys don't mind. Of course. Is that if you just take a wet brush and come along the chalk, the chalk will erase. Ah. So don't get panicked about it. Some of it's going to show for a little tiny bit while we're painting it in. Oh, that's so nice. While we're painting it in. So don't panic about that at this point. You know what I realized I forgot? What'd you forget? My sippy sippy. Oh, that's okay. I no, I have no water. I got no soda. I got no kombucha. I actually don't get any soda anymore. Mm. Healthy life choices. Are you guys doing really good? Yeah. If you guys can do me a favor at home, whenever you're watching this, if you're here on the live, definitely do this now. If you're here on the replay, it's a good time to do that. Take a minute. And I, especially if you're painting along and you're doing it at a table or you're bent over pillow, I want you to just sort of sit up for a second and relax those muscles in the neck, muscles in the back, and pull your shoulders back a little bit and make sure you're not carrying a lot of tension in your body because you'll, especially when you're new to painting, it's very exciting and you'll concentrate very hard and you will hold your breath and start to pull tension in your body. So it's important to remember to kind of lift up and relax your body and, you know, really listen to it. If it's starting to be like, this side of me is feeling a little bit weird. And also take a deep breath. Because <sighs> you probably didn't start painting to get all stressed. So 
yeah no, so the feedback on the elephants is these are probably african elephants and african elephants both males and females have tusks whereas if you go to asian elephants typically only the males have tusks well i think we have to almost at some point paint some asian elephants so we have a nice plethora of elephants don't I, you I mean if you're gonna have elephant paintings around the house you want to represent asian and african elephants and have elephant diversity yeah. i guess there's also some, some skull and head and ear shape differences just some subtle stuff you know that's kind of cool as you get to know your uh elephant well, when you're here and you're looking at, you know, your image, whether you're doing your traceable or this, this is a good time to take in now and kind of pay attention to what's showing after we paint the silhouettes in and make sure that you like the little detail and weird delicate bit of work that's going to be showing through the silhouettes. Yeah. I'm going to step back, take that in. That's always nice. Uh, I like it. Turned like out really it? nice. I like it. So you're really going to be, it's going to be go really quick from here because it's just a matter of you just doing just a little bit of, painting in the silhouette. Just a little bit of silhouette painting in. Now you can use black paint and thin it, or you could use a, like a deco art Americana craft paint in black, or you could use a nice golden fluid paint. They're all kind of very usable here. I'll put some of that out too. I'm going to use mostly my number four round for the rest of this because it's got a nice point on it. So I'll be able to get some delicate work. And I don't mind mixing these two together. The point is, is that it should be nice and fluid and flow off my brush uh, really, really well. So I'm gonna start here and I am holding the brush in close to the canvas. That's because I stand so close for the filming. Normally, if you're at an easel, you're way, way back here. Mm. But I have some weird things that I've got to do for the type of uh, videos that we make. This is true. That is a fun line to do. That little curve, yeah, to me, is just a joy. Because the brush just wants to make that, that shape. It just wants to flow like that. Mm -hmm. And you really feel it in your brushes um, in this kind of work. Now, paying attention to what I got going on here. And you can see I'm not really having a hard time covering anything underneath. That's about the quality of the paint. Yeah. But look, even if I was painting a paint that was having a little trouble uh, covering, two coats will do it. So don't panic. Mm. You don't got to run out and buy anything new. Don't be stressed. <laughs> I'm enjoying this very much. Yeah, me too. Now, I'll post up the step-by-step -step of this uh, after. Very if, good. And that way you guys can use that. If you decide to save this post into a post collection, mm -hmm. and if you didn't know that, yeah, you can save posts. You can find them later. And you can always find it by doing a search on our website. That's right, because this will be on our website with the traceable and the step-by-step -step and the link to the video. Yep. So you can always find any video that you lost by going to our website, clicking in the video search button. Another good way, if you remember the month it was made, if you check our calendar, sometimes that'll help you find videos. Mm -hmm. Like That's really important if you were doing Acrylic April with me. <laughs> and I'm going to add this. They have playlists now on Facebook, and I'm going to add this to the full free uh, art lesson playlist that's over in the video tab. So if you look on this page, the page has a video tab. Mm -hmm. You just go there, and it'll have playlists, and you'll be able to find this, and I'll make sure this is in that playlist. So you'll be able to find this again. Oh, very good. And take your time and enjoy your painting process. So you can see that paints in fairly quickly, doesn't it? Oh, it does. I'm going to just kind of exaggerate that a little bit even. Just so it's more uh, ear-like. Those little lines can sometimes make a big difference. 
Kachuk is fighting back a little bit. <laughs> now, the, the chalk won't um, affect the paint, will it? This won't. If I was using, like, a really good pastel, it could. Mm. It could impact the color of the paint because it would have so much pigment in it that it absolutely might. There we go. They have such interesting little ends of their noses, don't they? They do. Very articulate little noses. It's like kind of crazy when you think they got a drink out of their nose, though. Well, I guess they suck it in their nose and then squirt it in their mouth. It's still essentially the same thing. Unless I'm misunderstanding what I'm seeing on the nature shows. But it looks like that's what they're doing to me. My son loves nature shows. Loves them. Um, oh, yeah. But only the happy ones. He doesn't like the scary, sad ones. Journey through the microcosm has been really good. Oh, that's that um, green series, right? Yeah. The green. Oh, that is really good. I've been enjoying that, especially the tardigrade episode. <gasps> I should paint a tardigrade. Mm, could never have too many of those. Cannot. Tardigrades in space. <laughs> I think that was the last episode they did. <laughs> was the Tardigrades? <laughs> I think yeah. they take a minute to do those episodes. And then here on Facebook, there's two facts. Which is not really kid-friendly. Mm. Seems like it is, but it is not. Just heads up. <laughs> it's satirical. It's satirical and super funny, but it's not necessarily all ages. Mm-hmm. Depends on the kid, too. I'm just sharing with you since I had a surprising moment with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I still love the show. Oh, yeah, me too. Fantastic. Makes me laugh. Makes me laugh hard. Mm-hmm. You can kind of see that the little silhouettes are coming in beautifully. And I've got to put in some trunk. And then I'll have to clean up those lines, which I'll show you me doing. So this is a good time just to make sure that you like the coverage of your paint and that it's nice and full and that not a lot of the canvas is showing. And I'm going to bring a little trunk forward. You'll have to let us know in the comments, guys. Would you like to see us next week for another sunsetty little episode? Mm -hmm. I would like to see us again. <laughs> I like doing this. Now make that next one uh, kind of longer. Because that's what it's doing here. Well, that worked well. They definitely would like to see more sunsets. I love doing sunsets. So that would be my great pleasure. Yes. Now I'm going to dry this. You dry it so you can get all of the little, um, yeah, I know what you mean. I'll explain. So she's going to go through and dry this just to make sure that the uh, black paint is nice and dry. Now, see, if you'll watch the shift on that paint, it'll go from being, you know, sort of one, you know, these different colors to being the same sheen. And that's uh, sort of, you can see the, the chemical reaction as it's um, curing. And if by adding heat, you can accelerate that in an unpleasant way that will cause it to shift. That's why you don't want to do that. But there we go. This is so nice. And we'll take a little Q&A after, and then I'll see you guys next week, I think. Now, is it uh, better to trace with a pen or a pencil? Or mark with a projector on the wall, you know, like, what's the best way of transferring an image? Well, the best way of transferring the image is the one that doesn't damage your canvas and that you're very confident with. So some people like the transfer method. Some people like to use uh, carbon papers under that. Some people like to rub chalk on the back of the transfer paper. Some people like to do what I just did, which is freehand with chalk. But if you do pencil, the issue is, is that it's going to really stay on the canvas and can come up through the paint. 
wonderful, beautiful technique if you mean to do it. Kind of a bummer if you didn't. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes watercolor pencil is really nice. I also have a bunch of these uh, general pastel chalk pencils. The only issue is, and the reason I haven't been demoing them lately, is if you press really hard, um, the lines can stay in the paint. Yeah. So that's a bummer. Um, and then gridding is also really nice. So really there's a lot of ways and projection is really great. But the important thing to realize is that none of it's cheating. It's all technique. Um, if you think about uh, Vermeer's The Plural Airing, that's likely a projection, right? That's likely from a camera obscura. You know, there's all kinds of methods that artists have developed to get an idea out of their heads onto a less expensive media and then onto their more expensive media, which is their canvas. So these are techniques that you would be learning anywhere you went for an art education. So you never have to feel bad about it at all. And as long as you like keep trying to like add to your little skill box, you're going to get to the drawing place. You're going to get where you can freehand. You're going to get where you can do what you want to do in art. But you don't have to be there today or right now. It's okay to be in progress. Mm. That's allowed. Oh, it's so nice. I'm very happy with this. Yeah, me too. This is had a really nice. I really, really like that. Well, let's turn around. And oh, I haven't signed it. I got to sign it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to sign it. So here's a little thing on signing. I have my little mission on signing. But what I'll basically say is however you sign your painting, just think about that the signature is going to impact, right, the composition. So whatever you do, I'm going to just use this wonderful detail brush for a second because I can. See, refine that. This is a mm -hmm. number one art sherpa detail. And sometimes if you want to have like a fine line, something like that can be fun. So I can take this and I can sign. And I think I'll sign right under the ear. You can see this mark is part of the canvas. And oh, that's yeah. all I'm saying. If you were to do it in some crazy color you didn't use on the canvas, or it was like so super big that it took over everything, you just have to realize it's part of your composition. It is okay to sign on the back. And actually, a lot of artists these days don't even sign at all. So all of those choices are perfectly acceptable. Any of them are good. Mm. They're all good. You just got to figure out which one makes you happy when you're... Dropping your canvas. When you're dropping your canvas and looking at it on the wall. Boom, boom. Dropping your surface. Let's see if we get that. John will recenter so you can see that. I can do that. So I'll take a question before we head see, out. You're, you're all getting, you're making me like jump around and do all oh, the stuff. I'm sorry. Too. Okay. Well, red serral, will it bleed through? Um, red serral, in my experience, has been bleeding through. And so I'm only using the yellow from that company and I'm only using the white. The blue and the red, I have found for what I do is just too much. And it's mm. not coming up uh, efficiently enough in the paint. Very, but I love the company, and I love serral paper, and I highly recommend it. But I just like the white, and I like the yellow, and that seems to work for almost anything that I've got to do where I'm going to use serral paper as a transferring agent. Okay, I've got a good question. Okay. Good last question for you. Okay. Oh, totally cool. Okay. So, Shelly would like to know, once you sign something, let's say you create a signature. You've got your style. You Let's say you, know, you want to do something cool, like right. make a red slash through it or something. You, you mean, know. Yes. Yes, I'm very let's familiar say, with the red slash. Let's say. Name. Let's say you got that down. You All got right, your, cool. And, and you sign, you know, a couple paintings, but then if, you're like, I want to make a blue slash. Can you change it up? Is it okay to switch it around? Okay, so here is the two correct answers about it that are completely in differing opinions, which is why I think artists just run around going like, what is happening, right? So the first answer is yes, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. As artists, we're ever in development, we're ever changing, and every part of our creative process should only answer to us. And if you're feeling that calling to put a blue slash through your name, you got to go for that, right? Because at the end of the day, the painting is about your time that you spend with it and creating it. Everything that happens after really doesn't have anything to do with you. It just kind of goes out and lives its life. But for your time, you have to answer and please yourself. That being said, if you're talking about like hanging commercially and building up a collector base, and getting galleries to carry you, sometimes they will be resistant to those kinds of changes because it makes the providence of a painting harder to determine. Like if you like to sign your painting in Sharpie, you'll get some blowback sometimes, not because you don't have a right to sign in Sharpie. You can sign in anything you want, even though Sharpie will fade and it has some, you know, material problems. 
again, it's your painting, but the thing is, is they're talking about providence. That's being able to prove you made the painting. And not just this month when they can call you up and say, hey, did you make the painting? But also in 50 years when they're trying to tell somebody on the future Antiques Roadshow that you made the painting. If you change your signature a lot, that can make those things more challenging. And that's really just up to what you think the future of your art journey is going to be. Mm. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's up for, you know, people who verify art and you're maybe giving them a future job where they have to figure it out. <laughs> so either is good. Is that, is that, does that make sense? They're kind of like opposite answers, but yeah. they're both correct. It's weird. Now, if there's any other things you want to learn about, like varnishing or crazy stuff like that, go out to our website. If you'll click on the video uh, link in the upper in the upper toolbar, you'll get a little search window there. And mm -hmm. you can just type in anything you want, and there's a bunch of stuff and up And if there. it doesn't show up there, because sometimes the search is glitchy, you can go on the YouTube channel and do Oop. the same thing. There it is. Right? There. So it's all good. There's a way. It's very rare that we don't have it. Um, if you weren't aware, we do have a Facebook group here and you're welcome to take your elephant paintings that you've done with us today and come to the Facebook group and share them. It is friendly, it is inclusive, and you never have to worry about sharing your first painting because we are a nice group of people and we've all had our first painting. I want you to be really good to yourself. I want you to be good to each other. And I especially want to see you at an easel really soon. I'll post up our next live when one's coming up and I hope you'll join us. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.